Hi, this is Jules, and today is the second part of a video series where we're discussing audio for wedding videographers. So in the previous video, we went through and looked at a lot of different options as a wedding videographer that you could go to for capturing audio during weddings. And we looked at different sources, ones that you could put on the camera, ones that you could use off the camera and put them in a remote location, and ones that you could put on a person uh, and that they would be clipped on and capture the audio as that person moved around. I gave you the opportunity to see what they sounded like in this room, which is a very controlled environment. And yes, there are some issues with that because this isn't typically what it would sound like in a wedding situation. You know, imagine a, a ceremony in a church or in a hall that was very echoey, or, you know, the fact that there'd be guests there and they would be making little bits of noise, even if they were trying to be quiet. And then also the fact that, you know, throughout the day, um, people move to different locations. And so it's a very uncontrolled environment. We also have to think about if people do outdoor ceremonies and the, the fact that there's going to be some natural outdoor noise, there's going to be wind, there's going to be birds and animals, there's going to be other things that you just can't control. And we can't replicate all of that in here. So those, those example of, of listening to these microphones and these recorders was just to get an idea of the difference in, in how they sound like raw audio recording. Now as wedding videographers, we're not necessarily working with large budgets and we're not really trying to create something that would replicate um, the, the, the audio quality of a movie. But what we want is we want to get the best quality that we can possibly get out of the situation that we've, we've got. So for capturing audio at weddings, there are some things that we have to take into consideration. One of them is price, because we can not be buying the best microphones um, that there are on the market, and they wouldn't necessarily be fit for purpose. Uh, we have to think about the size of the device uh, and how easy it is to place somewhere. So is it something that we can clip on? Is it something that we have to place somewhere? Is it you know going to stand out? Uh, how intimidating it is going to be for the person who's going to be using it, holding it, wearing it, whatever that is. And we have to think about the ease of use. So how easy is it for us to um, place it wherever it needs to be placed, to turn it on and on, on and off and things like that. So I'm just going to go through a few of the things that you would consider um, when we're looking at the audio recorders and microphones that we tested in the last video. So first of all, the, the easiest one is probably going to be the on-camera microphones. So if we just take this off for a second, um, the on-camera microphones are usually um, just around this area here. So they're either just on the front or they're just around this area on this camera. They're at the sides there of the, of the eyepiece. So because they're built in and you're going to be using your camera anyway, they are obviously the most easy to... Um, to, to use because you've already got them, you don't have to buy them, they're not adding anything extra to your camera, you're not putting them on somebody, so they're not going to be intimidating anyone. If they're happy with you using your camera, they're happy with you recording the audio. So there are some, some you know, bonuses for using the in-camera microphones, and as I said in the last one, they do get some really nice room um, ambience noise. But when you're talking about voice and dialogue and hearing vows and speeches and things like that, they really don't give you the uh, best source um, available. And, you know, what I'm going to be talking about now is all stuff from my own experience of shooting weddings for the last few years and testing out a lot of these different pieces of equipment in different environments, on different in different situations. And I kind of realized what works best for me and the way that I want to capture weddings. So then the next thing that you could look at would be a little shotgun mic like this. You could use this Rode Video Micro, you could use a Video Mic Pro, which is, is slightly bigger and um, slightly better quality. Uh, the difference between the two really are that this one's smaller um, and it doesn't require power. So the, the Video Mic Pro actually needs um, a either battery putting in it or it needs charging the the internal battery that comes with it depending which version you've got um, so they give a similar um, result uh, the video mic pro is slightly better sound quality um, 
but this one is about a quarter of the price a third a quarter of the price and i'll be honest in most situations this is um this is this is pretty good i do use the video mic pro over it because i've got it but if you didn't have a video mic pro already this is a really good piece of kit to to buy it also comes with this uh windshield for outside so it's like a, a dead cat that you can just slot on there like that um, and this is really good if you've got like outside ceremonies and things like that this is great for cutting out the wind noise that you're going to get uh, when you're dealing with outside situations so i think most videographers would choose to get a shotgun mic for their camera other than using the internal microphone and that's that's a good call um, but i'll be perfectly honest um, when I started out in wedding videography, everyone, you know, that was doing any sort of tutorials, any books, they were all telling you to buy a shotgun mic for your camera. And if I was to start again, it would not be the first thing that I could buy. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you were starting out or if you have been doing this a while and you're wanting to upgrade your audio um, and make, make your audio better, that's not where I would start out. It's, it's good to have a shotgun mic on your camera for weddings, but it's not the best way of capturing clean audio. And that's why I'm going to go on to explaining now. So the best way of capturing audio from my experience at a wedding, because you cannot control the environment and you cannot use something like a boom mic, I mean, let's be honest, you're going to look ridiculous, is you need to go with on person microphones. In the last video I showed you quite a few different options for on-person on microphones and they're all you know similar and they don't necessarily all give the same quality of audio but they all have pros and cons. Um, so there are there is a personal preference that comes into it and there isn't one tool for every single job. There are situations where one might work better than another, and I'm I'm not here to dispute that. What I'm here to say is that in in sort of 80% of cases, 80% of situations at weddings, I'm going to explain why I use what I use, and um, I have all these other options if there is something that that requires a different approach. But if I was to invest my money and I could only afford one thing, this is what I would buy. And that piece of equipment is this, the Sony TX650. Now, what I'll say is, is if you get the, there's not a lot of settings on this, there's not a lot of functions and buttons, but if you set it up and you get the settings uh, right and you make sure that this is clipped in the right place on someone so that A, it isn't rubbing against something constantly and B, it doesn't accidentally pop off, which has happened from time to time. Um, if you clip this in the right place, this is going to get you some of the cleanest, best sounding audio for the price bracket and for the ease of use. So the reason I'm talking about price bracket and ease of use is because I would rather have um, more than one, one source. So rather than investing in an expensive source, I would rather have one microphone on each person talking than one microphone to capture everybody. And if you've got a limited budget, um, you're gonna buy one microphone that costs three, 400 pounds, or you could buy four or five of these for the same amount of money. These are 80 pounds each or there or thereabouts, then I would get multiple of these because they do the job and as long as they're clipped on each person, you get to hear what those people say very clearly. Um, they, there's, there's, they, they seem to work really well in terms of um, not kind of getting reverb from each person. Like if, if I use that one and it's on that person and then I switch to that one, it, it's, it's obvious that it's on that different person. They, they seem to be very good at um, capturing the, the the audio of what's going on around that person and not getting too much background noise and things like that. And the other thing about these is they are just ridiculously small. I mean, if you kind of look at the the size of it, um, it's, it's smaller than a pen. Um, and that's kind of how I always sell it to, to 
to the people that wear them. It's typically going to be the groom and the best man and maybe like a, a minister or a registrar that's going to be wearing these. And in the UK, it can be quite intimidating for people when you say you're going to put a microphone on them and it, it, they get a bit freaked out. But as soon as you kind of pull this out or as soon as you explain it as, you know, get a pen and just slot it in their pocket and say, this is where it's going to go. It's just, you know, I haven't got a pocket in here, but usually I put it in the pocket there. They totally chilled out about it. And that's why these are so, so useful because um, they, they're small, they're light, they're cheap. And they literally, once you've got all the settings set up, you turn them on. So you've got one button there to turn on. And then you've got one button there to press record. And then you put it on hold so that it can't be accidentally turned off, which is a, another useful feature. This LED screen does actually go black. So it's not, not showing up. And what you do is you put this inside the shirt or inside the pocket so that the only thing that's going to show up is this tiny little clip here. And that tiny little clip's barely noticeable. It's only noticeable if you're looking for it. And they have got internal memory of 16 gigabytes and a battery that will last for somewhere between 10, 15, 20 hours if they're fully charged up. So you can just leave these going for a whole ceremony, a whole set of speeches, whatever, uh, and be confident that you're not gonna run out of memory or run out of battery. And it's only been on very few occasions where there have been any kind of like rustling or anything like that. And it's usually been my fault or whoever's put the microphone on the person's fault. So these are really are the best thing that um, I've come across for capturing audio at weddings. That being said, I don't want to not discuss the other uh, aspects. So this, the Tascam DR10L, again, this is an excellent option. And if you're talking about pure sound quality, um, this is definitely going to give you a slight edge when it comes to the sound quality over one of these. What I will say is, um, is the, the the microphone that comes with this is decent. Some people like to change the, the lav mic and then you are getting into an expensive situation. If you use just the microphone that comes with it, um, which is nice because it screws in, um, so it's nice and secure in there. Um, you, you're talking about, I think I had to get this from America because I didn't have them in this country. There are some versions you can get in the UK and in Europe, uh, but they don't necessarily come with the lav mic. Because I had to get this from America, there was some ridiculous import charge that I wasn't anticipating, and it, so it ended up costing me way over 200 quid to get this. Um, you need to put a battery in it, a little AAA, and you're going to need a memory card in it. Um, and that, to me, you know, it's more than... it's more than twice as expensive as this uh, and uh, you, you need extra accessories for it the battery doesn't last as long um, and in terms of the you know size and use of it it's a bit more cumbersome because you've got this wire so you're going to need a pocket or something somewhere to clip this away from the, the, the shirt and tie area and then you're going to need to clip this onto the tie or onto the shirt or, or onto someone's jacket and then you've got the wire to deal with and whilst there's ways around that what I will say from experience is in a wedding if you're rushing you haven't got much time to, to put the microphone on and you're trying to like make the person feel at ease and, and not not create a fuss uh, it really is a little bit more difficult to use one of these than it is a Sony TX650. So based on the fact that it's slightly better audio quality, that a bride and groom aren't really going to tell. And once you've played with it in post a little bit, it's barely noticeable. Um, I don't think that this is worth the extra money over spending it on a, something like the TX650. There are, however reasons to have this for other projects um, where these definitely work much better and it's much more professional looking for a corporate job or something like that but as we're talking about weddings the, the I've got two of these and they don't get used anywhere near as much as the the five of these that I've got 
Another one to talk about is this, it's the Sony TX800. The Sony TX800 is basically the same as the TX650, but instead of it being long and thin, uh, it's, it's kind of a much shorter, um, slightly fatter uh, body, um, but it's also got the clip on the back, um, it's got the same functions, and it, it, you know, you can also clip this one into a jacket. So th there's not much difference really. The, the functionality is very similar. The plus points to the TX800 are it is a different shape and it is slightly smaller. So in some respects, it's it's more uh, inconspicuous. I would say that the audio quality is really slightly better, um, and. It has got a remote control and it has got an app feature built in for your phone. So you can technically monitor the audio from this, which you can't with the TX650s. And that makes this a little bit more um, of an attractive proposition for somebody who wants to guarantee that they can monitor their audio. But what I'll say is, is that this is twice as, twice as expensive as the TX650. So it, it kind of puts it more on a, you know, a Tascam DR10L price bracket, and I wouldn't say that I use this as much as the TX650s, just because this is a, a better, f the, the TX650s are a better fit for grooms and best man's shirts and uh, pockets and jacket pockets. Um, but this does get used, and sometimes this is really good for for women and on women's dresses if you if you're trying to clip something to them because it's it does weigh slightly less and it doesn't sort of pull as much um again you can get these quite easily off off amazon same with this or most kind of electrical type stores this one i had to get from america very quickly, I talk about this uh, Chinese one. I bought this just to see what it was like. There are lots and lots of cheap dictaphones on Am sites like Amazon and things like that. Uh, this one, it, it costs about 20, 30 quid. Um, I've not used this at a wedding. I got it in the in the off season to, to test. Um, I haven't tested it properly. I used it for the first time in the video yesterday. I, I can't work out how to use it properly. I'm gonna have, it, I've never read the instructions for anything I've used really, but I'm gonna to have to read the instructions on this because it's just not as intuitive. Um, it didn't sound to me like the audio quality was as good, but I'm not gonna write it off completely. What I'll say is, is for 20, 30 quid, if you can get the audio quality to be somewhere similar to a TX650, this could be a real option. Um, the issue with it is, is it is bigger, it is much heavier, it's like a metal case. Um, and it doesn't seem as simple to use. So even though it's much cheaper, I wouldn't necessarily choose to go with this. Very quickly, then there's the Instamic. Uh, the Instamic is something, again, that I bought because I wanted to try it out. I can definitely see uses for this. This is tiny. If this is the, the, the TX800 I was talking about there, and that's the Instamic, you can see that the size difference, the Instamic is absolutely tiny. Um, and Again, because you've got this magnetic, um, you, you know, it's magnets and it'll stick to, you can make it, you, well, you've got magnets and you've got some stickies as well, you know, it's, and it's got a clip, so you can kind of get it to stick anywhere. So I can see some uses for this, um, but uh, this isn't particularly cheap. It's more expensive than, let's say, the, the TX650s. It's not as, not as expensive as the DR10L. Um, but the audio quality does not seem to be anywhere near as good. Um, so for certain situations, I can see this as being a useful, a useful, a useful product. Uh, for weddings, I'm not not saying this is. I don't, I don't know how much I'll use this for weddings, but I'm not going to say I won't. I just think that most situations, a TX650 is going to be much better to use than this. Uh, before I, before I kind of wrap that up, what I should say is, is it, it's got the app. You can turn it on and off from the app. It's it's monitorable from the app. Um, so I can see the technology here. If the microphones were better and the, the audio that came out of it sounded better, I do think this would be a, a really attractive option. 
Um, it does look a little bit weird because if you're going to be mounting it on top of someone's clothing, um, it's going to look like they've got like a weird bug or something on them. So maybe that will be a little bit off-putting for, for people at weddings. Um, but yeah, I'll see. I might use it. So what about the off-person options? Now, the on-person microphones are always, I always find, give you the best audio. So put one on everyone who's speaking during the ceremony speeches. Um, and the, because of the, the size and, and the ease of the Sony TX650, they're really simple. But you don't want to just use one source of audio because what if something goes wrong? What if it battery fails, it didn't record for whatever reason, it gets lost, which has happened before. So you're gonna want some backup audio. And that's where the the Zoom recorders or whatever recorder it is that you wanna use, a Tascam or whatever, but I've got these Zoom ones. That's where these come in handy uh, to get you that secondary kind of backup source. You could probably tell from doing the test that this H4, the more expensive, bigger one with the bigger microphones, this seems to have the best audio quality and, and I would normally use this. This would be my first choice. But as you can see, it's quite big. If you compare it to the others, you know, there's a definite size difference. This H2N, this all black H2N uh, is much more inconspicuous than this one. Uh, but this one gives a slightly better audio quality. So you've kind of sometimes got to weigh it up and I do use both um, depending on the situation. How would I use those? Well, they get placed as close to the, the, the source of, of where people are speaking as possible. So they're not usually, they don't usually give the best audio quality um, because it's very difficult to get that close to, to mount this. Because unless you put this on a stand and then stand it next to someone as if they were actually talking to the mic, if you did that, the, the, the sound quality from these would be amazing. Um, but usually you can't do that. Usually you've got to use a, a Joby Gorilla pod and like fasten it to something up high or you've got to mount it somewhere pointing down low or you've got to hide it in some flowers or whatever. Um, speeches, that's for ceremony speeches, I usually just place them on the top table and again unless everyone comes and speaks in the same place um, you're gonna get a variety of um, a variety of results and in UK weddings, typically people don't go to a, um, a lectern or a particular point to, to, to do their speech. They usually um, speak from wherever they are, either on the top table or if they're on different tables, they speak from there. So then, you know, if they're not close to this, the audio isn't going to be great that you're going to get from this. But the reason I do always put these out and have them recording is because I want those multiple sources. I want those backup sources. So un unless you're talking about a situation where you can put this on a lectern um, and then that, that will get you some decent results. If, if you're just placing them nearby where people speak, these are the backups and this is going to be the, the primary source. And then the kind of third backup will be what's on the closest camera to where people are speaking because I'm gonna have multiple cameras. So one might be at the back of the church. This one might be at the front of the church. And on this one, I'm gonna have the shotgun mic and it's gonna be pointing towards people where people are likely to be speaking. I wanna quickly talk about accessories. So for something like this, the, the H4N, for an outdoor ceremony, I'm gonna want a dead cat that can go over the top like this. You can buy these from wherever Amazon places like that and then they've just got this like a jaw string that attaches that's just going to help you cut out the wind noise from these uh, and do the same job as what this is going to do on the shotgun mic and um, you can get little mini kind of dead kittens or whatever you want to call them that can go on top of the TX650s or can go on the DR10L microphone uh, lav mics uh, and I would you know, for the sake of like a few quid, 10, 20 quid, uh, I would suggest getting some of these um, so that you can um, so that you can cut out that wind noise in case you are in an outdoor ceremony. 
So just a couple more ways that we can uh, capture audio at weddings that I haven't discussed already. And it involves using a PA system and a microphone, which is something that you might be faced with um, at weddings. So the first one is that if someone's using a handheld, handheld microphone, you can get these little sleeves for these. I haven't got one with me at the moment, um, but the, the little sleeve goes around the microphone and then it kind of holds this in place so that the, the microphone in, on this bit is at the similar location to the microphone and, and then they're just holding that and as they're holding it um, and speaking, they're, they're kind of talking into that and you're capturing what, what they're speaking through that as well as it going through the PA system. You could not get one of the sleeves and you could just tape this around. I've done that before. It doesn't look as professional. The sleeves do definitely look more professional. Another option is to use a lav mic like this or you could use something like this and clip it or drape it or hold it near to a PA speaker. Uh, and if you get the levels right within the device, that gets you another source of, of audio uh, but that's going to depend on them speaking through the microphone and then that coming out of the speaker and you're capturing it through that. And the third method when you're talking about using a PA system is that you could get some cables like an XLR cable and you could take a feed from the either the PA system mixer or if the speakers have got um, they've got their own outputs on the speakers. You could take a feed from the speaker or from the PA system mixer uh, and you could feed that into something like the H4N, which has got some XLR inputs at the bottom. To get that right, you need to make sure you've got the levels right and I would suggest that you need to test that before people start using the microphone for the speeches or whatever. Um, because you won't have time to, to mess around changing the levels and making sure that things are right at the, that time. It's something that you need to have done before that happens, test it all out, make sure the recording's good. Um, and so that's one reason, the fact that you, you're not sure what you're going to get until the, the people start speaking. Uh, and sometimes you don't have time to spot talk to the DJ or the venue to to actually go through and test all the PA equipment. So not being sure what you're going to get is a little bit of an issue with that. I know that in America that is a standard way of capturing the audio, but I know that in the UK things are slightly different. And whenever I've tried to do this, and I've, I've tried to do it on multiple occasions, it's never ever turned out as good as the sources that I've used myself clipping on person. And so I've just stopped doing it now. Um, there's different reasons for this, and that is because you don't know the PA system. It's not your PA system. All the PA systems have different sort of qualities. They're all set up differently. Um, and that can be quite farcical. And then there's the issue of, is the PA system going to work? Is it going to drop out? And, and like, I, I can't tell you how many weddings I've gone to where, um, you know, the, the signal's dropping in and out, they're using wireless microphones and they're moving around the room and it's just, it's horrendous. Cause like one minute the, you're hearing them fine and the next minute it goes dead. And if that's your only or main source of, of audio, it, you're knackered because it's, it's, it's not gonna be any good. And the third one is, that particularly in the UK from you know from what I've seen at weddings, people aren't used to using microphones and PA systems and the positioning of where people put their microphone um, when they're talking into it, it is very all over the place. So again, if someone puts decides to put the microphone down here and talk into it, whether you've got a, your one of your TX650 strapped to it here or whether you're getting a feed out of the PA system, it doesn't really matter. It's it's not going to be fantastic. Whereas if you've got the the one clipped up here in their shirt or in their jacket, um, you, you know it's going to be good, um, even if there is a little bit of reverb from the PA system itself. So. Before I wrap up, just to mention another thing about clipping something on someone's shirt or someone's jacket or someone's tie or whatever, um, is that you really do need to have a conversation with them before you do that. The reason is, is 
uh, blokes tend to take the jackets off or waistcoats off or whatever at different points in weddings and it gets hot and they're going to do the speech and they want to be comfortable so if you were to clip that on someone's jacket and then they take their jacket off and do the speech you're not going to get the quality of audio that you were after uh, so we always have a quick conversation with them and just say look what you're planning to do and even if they actually say I'm leaving my jacket on if I look at them and they've got a bit of bead of sweat on their brow and it's really hot in that room then I'm going to put it on their shirt because even though the shirt placement might not be as good it's guaranteed that they're not going to be taking the shirt off so there you have it uh, audio for wedding videographers, um, kind of a whistle stop tour if you like, a lot to cover, I'm sorry if I've, I've talked a lot in this video, um, but there's, there is there is so much to cover and I haven't gone into anywhere near the detail that I could go into about how to set all of these devices up and about how to place them on people and things like that. But what I have tried to give you is a, a decent overview over these two videos of the options that you've got and why spending your money on one rather than another might be better for you. I'm Jules, I really appreciate you watching this video and I really hope it's been helpful. If you found it helpful, please tell somebody about it who might also appreciate it. Please put something in the comments, you know, just tell me what you think of how, how I've gone through this, if it's been useful, if, it's, if I've gone on too long about something or I've not covered something, let me know. Um, and please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. And that way, other content that we make in the future, you'll get to see. Thanks a lot and take care.